Our next speaker will be Dr. Rainer Pichot, who is a senior consultant in cardiology from Austria. Uh, in 1996, he shifted his focus from uh, a full-time position as an assistant director at the Department of Cardiology of the State Hospital in Graz, Austria, to become a researcher at Marish Vedic University in Vlodrop, Vlodrop the Netherlands. Dr. Pisha has traveled throughout the world to lecture on Marashi Ayurveda. He has developed new hospital designs, course materials, and medical curricula in order to integrate the most ancient system of uh, healthcare, Marashi Ayurveda, with modern medicine. Dr. Pisha is chairman of the Marashi College of Perfect Health International and chairman of the International Marashi Ayurveda Foundation for Health Professionals. Uh, he will now speak to us on management of cardiovascular disease through transcendental meditation. Uh, it's a joy to have you, Dr. Rainer Fischer. Yes, thank you for your nice introduction. And uh, it's a great joy to have the opportunity to speak to Ethiopia's Debridaba University. And uh, I will focus my talk on uh, cardiovascular disease and I will show you some high level uh, evidence research. I will just now start uh, sharing my screen. So it's about stress management and we use as a management technique transcendental meditation here in this review. And I just wanted to share with you and you probably as medical students and <laughs> medical university no better than me, but cardiovascular disease in Ethiopia uh, have come in a more increasing way. Uh, and actually, there was a shift from a previous more dominance of communi communicable diseases, like infectious diseases like malaria and other infectious disease, which was quite dominant. And now, uh, non communicable diseases have taken over the majority. And among the top leading cause of these non-communicable diseases are uh, cardiovascular diseases like cerebrovascular disease, hypertension, one of the main risk factors, and ischemic heart disease. So it's a major health issue right now in Ethiopia and still increasing. So it's uh, definitely an important uh, topic. And here you see a study, it's called the Interheart study. It's not on transcendental meditation, this one, but this is the biggest study ever done on risk factors for cardiovascular disease. There are more than 27,000 subjects in 52 countries. And you can see here nine risk factors. And uh, as medical students, you will know there are much more risk factors. Now we can count more than 100 or 300 even. But these nine, are, uh, uh, this you can change through lifestyle and through medications. Um, uh, you can modify those risk factors. That's why they are so important. And you have smoking, hypertension, physical inactivity, alcohol consume, diet. That means too little of fruits and vegetables, diabetes, and then uh, psychosocial stress lipid profile and overweight obesity. And here in 2014, it was the first time that psychosocial stress has been included in these risk factors. And the interesting thing about this is that you can predict about 90% of all uh, heart attacks if you calculate with these nine risk factors. And even 80% of all heart attacks can be prevented if all these nine risk factors that are modifiable, that you can modify, uh, can be prevented. So there's a huge potential for lifestyle medicine and addressing these nine risk factors to prevent um, the majority of cardio cardiovascular events. And uh, of course, we will focus here as, as, as topic is stress management on psychosocial stress. And actually, it's not just one of these nine risk factors. First of all, it's equally um, of importance. You know, the odds ratio that is the, you know, how likely it is to predict a cardiovascular event is the same as like for smoking or the other risk factors. 
So it's not something small, but uh, even more important in my opinion is that uh, stress is a kind of uh, promoting or enforcing all the other risk factors. Because if we go back, you can understand that if you are under stress, you may eat more, you tend more likely to smoke, your blood pressure goes up with stress, you have no time for physical activity, you may consume more alcohol, your diet is not as good, and you eat more sweets and so forth. So uh, stress is really like, uh, you know, we say cause of the causes, some scientists say, it's, it's, it's the cause of the other causes. So really important to uh, handle cardiovascular disease through a proper and effective uh, stress management program. And uh, here you see just an example of how stress and cardiovascular disease relate. Let's, this is a vicious cycle that goes on and on. Let's start here. Let's start here with a heart attack. Here you see the heart and here is indicated an ischemic area, acute myocardial infarction, which leads to a lot of pain and stress. So the nervous system is activated, especially the sympathetic nervous system, which then activates in the bone marrow the immune cells like the leukocytes and in the spleen they are transformed into something called pro-inflammatory monocytes. And they go into existing ateromas, you know, in the, if there is too much cholesterol, there's deposit, you know, an, an atherosclerotic plaque, we say, or an ateroma. And if the immune cells enter this, it gets inflamed. And then more likely a blood clot can happen and you have a heart attack. And this is starting again, this cycle. So this is how the uh, nervous system and the immune system uh, and the stress uh, is related to each other. Now we spoke already quite a lot about transcendental meditation. So I don't have to spend too much time on this, but just as a review, it's a traditional technique from the yoga, from the ancient system of yoga. It's very easy to learn in about five days, and there are certified instructors all over the world. And it takes just 50 to 20 minutes twice a day that, and you perform this with closed eyes in a sitting position usually, and you experience this restful alertness, which is actually a contradiction, but this is what it is. And uh, there is really a lot of evidence on the effectiveness. And so this well documented, I will go with you a little bit, just two, three studies, not there are like 600 studies over the last 50 years. And uh, really some of them in, in top clinical journals. journals. And um, so I just wanted to, before we enter this, to give you an overview of what really stress means. This is a quite a wide range of possibilities. One of the main reasons for stress, and this is includes also heart attack, because we, after heart attack, this is such a stress, a lot, because it's life-threatening, you can have a post-traumatic stress, and there are many other reasons, of course, for post-traumatic stress after war and all those things. I will emphasize a little, little more, but anxiety, depression, anger, if you don't enjoy social support, or you have a lower socioeconomic status in the occupation, in your job area, stress, racial discrimination or marital distress, all of this, uh, uh, you know, included or is part of psychosocial stress. And I want to now focus on post-traumatic stress because this is um, a really uh, a disorder that is underestimated. It's a there's a lifetime prevalence of 8% worldwide. And uh, those people who are exposed is much higher, like in soldiers and for you important for medical doctors, they have a higher stress level dealing with, you know, emergencies and deaths and so forth. They have a much higher prevalence. And the causes are also wide range, accidents, assaults, war related trauma, persecution, all these things. And uh, post-traumatic stress disorder is known to be a complex and very difficult to treat disorder. So let's look into that first. And there is a research published in the renowned medical journal, The Lancet Psychiatry in 2018, 
This was performed by the VA San Diego, the, the Department of Defense of the Army Medical Research in 2018, and they did a randomized control trial with over 200 veterans who suffered uh, from PTSD, and they were assigned into three groups. One was transcendental meditation, the other was prolonged exposure, which actually at the time is the golden standard treatment. That means the, <clears throat> the patient has to go through his trauma by reporting it, it's recorded, and have to go again, again through it by listening it, and it's a lengthy, quite painful therapy, but it works a little bit, and it's the golden standard. So it means nothing better than that. This was the second group, and the third group was a health education control. They, you know, they lived a healthy life, good diet, good relaxation, and sports, and so forth. And uh, the primary outcome of this uh, study was uh, a change in documented PTSD symptoms and the severity of it. And uh, they, they did this study over three months, and then they reassessed the clinical outcome. So let's look into that. Here is the outcome. It's a little bit a complex chart, but I will guide you through that. First of all, uh, they did three types of evaluation after three months. The first was a clinical administered uh, PTSD scale. That means there's an interview by a psych psychiatrist or an, an, an expert, medical expert. They were interviewing and asking the patient how he feels. The second was a standard uh, checklist by the military uh, uh, personnel, a military version of a PTSD checklist. And the third was a standard um, PTSD health questionnaire for depression, because this is one of the leading symptoms of PTSD. So these were three different, and they had like similar outcomes. The darker green bar is transcendental meditation, the greenish one is prolonged exposure, the golden standard, and the reddish is the health education program. So in all three types of evaluation, you see, and this on this scale, you have the effect size, is a statistical number, effective size, how effective it is. And you can see the transcendental limitation in all the three groups have been most effective, even better than the golden standard treatment, and of course, much better than the health education program. So this is a, a very interesting and encouraging outcome to address this very difficult to treat disorder, post-traumatic stress syndrome, through a mind-body technique, transcendental meditation. So this is one thing. And now, uh, because of shortness of time, I want to shift to hypertension, which you understand the main cause of hypertension or one of the risk factors is psychological stress. And I think in, in, in your country, I looked at it, uh, there are 20% of the population and with an increasing year after year increasing uh, percentage, they are affected, affected by hypertension. So have a look at to that. And hypertension is also really one of the main risk factors for stroke and, and heart attack. And uh, here is a study that has been done uh, in 2019 in the Journal of Ethnicity and Disease. And it's about stress reduction uh, program through transcendental limitation in the prevention of left ventricular hypertrophy. And you know that, that ventricular hypertrophy is one of the main, oh, sorry, uh, the main uh, complications, you know, organ damage, we say, from hypertension, that the heart muscle increases. And for the heart, it's not good to have a bigger mass because it diminishes the nutrition. This is limited through the coronary vascular system. So here has been, again, a randomized control, so a high-quality study uh, on transcendental meditation and compared again to health education, where people do exercise, you know, have a good diet and so forth, don't smoke and all these things. And, um, and the stress reduction was done, as I said, with transcendental meditation. And the outcome was that it was effective in preventing an LVMI means left ventricular mass index, like an index that 
uh, measures how much the heart muscle, the myocardium has increased. And they measure the progression because with high blood pressure, the left ventricular mass index will increase over time usually. And this has been done in high risk African American patients. So let's look at the outcome here in the simple chart. You see, uh, they have evaluated the patients after six months after baseline. So they started transcendental meditation and did the health education program. And after six months, they reassessed the uh, myocardial mass. And you can see here in the transcendental meditation group, there was no increase. So they, it was prevented from uh, you know, <clears throat> starting to have left ventricular hypertrophy. Whereas in the health control group, there was a usual expected increase over six months, a, a few points. Uh, that mass of the left ventricular myocardium has increased. And um, probably if you have gone through cardiovascular disease, you know that this left ventricular mass is a very strong predictor in problems. Actually, it becomes too much, then the uh, coronary arteries cannot uh, nourish this, and you get cardiomyopathy and even heart failure through uh, left ventricular hypertrophy. So this is also very encouraging study, high quality. The next one I wanted to show you was a study done in 2019 in the Journal of Nuclear Cardiology. And this was uh, studying the effects of cardiac rehabilitation with transcendental meditation. That means after heart attack, you usually go to some place of rehabilitation where you learn how to eat properly, exercise and live a healthy life. And this was a smaller pilot study. And they were using here a very high tech um, uh, technique to, uh, to evaluate. And that was the myocardial flow reserve. I don't know if you understand, I have learned about this, but the myocardial flow reserve is a reserve that every heart has when you start to exercise or any kind of stress, the blood flow increases through the coronary arteries in the myocardium. And this extra blood flow during stress is called myocardial flow reserve. And we need that for all our activities and sports and so forth. So this can be measured with positron emission tomography, so high-tech uh, uh, intervention or high-tech uh, evaluation. And here are the outcomes. Uh, you can see here on the <clears throat> scale here the myocardial flow reserve. Uh, measured with PET, positron emission tomography. And uh, here you can see uh, the effective size, how much uh, the flow reserve has improved uh, due to uh, cardiac rehabilitation after four weeks. It was measured, yes, after I think four, I mean, they have been there for four weeks in the, in the, in the cardiac rehabilitation center. And then they measured again the myocardial flow reserve and you clearly see here combined with transcendental meditation means a combination of, of standard cardiac rehabilitation together with transcendental meditation. And we do, when you do the cardiac rehabilitation without transcendental meditation, there is little change after this short time of in myocardial flow reserve. So this is a direct sign that the heart is better nourished, the coronary artery can transport the flow better to the myocardium. And this is quite amazing that this after such a short time uh, has been shown through adding transcendental meditation in a cardiac rehabilitation program. And now my last study <clears throat> is I think one of the best ones. It's some time ago, just 10 years in 2012 in the really top journal of circulation with the top most uh, uh, reputed uh, journal in, in cardiovas cardiovascular disease. They have done a study, a longitudinal study that went over 10 years and averaged more than five years. And they studied stress reduction through transcendental meditation in the secondary prevention of cardiovascular disease. That means there's already some issue with the heart, heart attack, or, you know, <clears throat> verified coronary vessel disease. And they included 201 subjects 
and again randomized controlled and single blinded and the intervention was transcendental limitation 100 people in that group and the other health education and in both groups they received top standard uh, treatment according to us they had you know beta blockers and blood thinners and they regulated the blood pressure with medication if necessary so they did all the things that you know and have health education and, and diet intervention just one of one the, half of the people they um they received uh as an additional intervention uh transcendental meditation and here you see the outcome this is the years 10 years average five years as i said the green line is the transcendental meditation group and the dotted line is the health education control group and this is the event free time that means here 100 percent you know if we would keep 100 percent then no one would <coughs> um experience heart attack stroke, stroke or death and this is another point this study focused on heart endpoints not just measuring the blood pressure or how you feel and so forth but you know the heart outcomes which is either you die from your disease or you have a stroke or heart attack and <clears throat> with transcendental meditation you have about uh, 48 percent uh, risk reduction for experience one of these three endpoints, heart attack, stroke, and death. So this is really very convincing, and there is no other intervention as, I, as far as I know, including statins and other cholesterol controlling um, interventions that have that uh, high level of risk reduction. And so that is very encouraging. I said it was published high profile in circulation. So with this, I come already to the end of my short presentation. And uh, after hearing this, we can conclude that transcendental meditation should be considered to manage uh, and to use in stress management for cardiovascular disease. Because first, transcendental meditation addresses stress and stress-related risk factors in cardiovascular disease. And there are many studies on that. I haven't shown them so much. And transcendental meditation, as we have seen, may help in preventing stress-induced cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. This is what I want to conclude with.